This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. So in this video, I'll show you guys how I edited this photo to make it look like this, how I edited this one and this one. As a lot of other Fuji photographers, I edit all my photos in Capture One because it handles the raw files from the X-Trans sensor that is in Fuji cameras a lot better than Lightroom. And I put a link to a free trial for Capture One in the description. All right, let's start with this photograph that I took from the Day of the Dead in Mexico City, which you of course have seen on National Geographic. <laughs> No? Okay. The first thing I do when I edit my photos is that I align and I crop the photo. Maybe something like this. I think it looks great and then we can refine it afterwards. The next thing I'd usually do is I adjust the white balance. And if we zoom in on this little boy's eyes, then we can go and pick white balance and by using this tool you can find a white spot or a gray or a black spot and tell capture one this is supposed to be white gray or black i like to use the eyes if it's possible so if we do something like this this is capture one's interpretation of how the white balance should be and i am i'm actually happy with that the next thing i usually set is the exposure and i like to start with the auto exposure that is up here where capture one interprets the photo itself and then we can take it from there i'm actually yeah this looks great while i do like this photograph in color i think i prefer it in black and white so if we go to the presets i have like a big bundle of presets that i bought from capture one uh, i think there's like 140 different presets of course, you shouldn't rely on them as much as I do, probably. But it's a good way to get inspiration about how your photograph could look. So let's just scroll through these options here of the black and white. I like this one a little contrasty, I think. Maybe something like this. I'm actually pretty happy with how this looks already. But I think there's one thing I would like to do. Let's create a new layer. And let's call that layer um, audience or people. And then we're going to go up here and pick the linear grading mask. So this makes like a gradient of a mask, which means everything you just saw that is marked in red is what we're going to adjust. And here you can see what this layer affects. What I would like to do is highlight the person in the photograph, like this little boy. And maybe we can highlight that by making the other people less visible. So I'm thinking if we decrease the, con the contrast, maybe we decrease the exposure a little bit. Maybe I would like to try to lower the clarity just to emphasize the boy in the center of the frame. Maybe, yeah, I like this. I think I would like to make one more layer. Let's call uh, the layer, what's this guy's name from? Coco, Miguel. <laughs> Let's call it like this. Now I'd like to isolate the edit on the boy. So we're gonna use this mask called the radial mask. And we're gonna draw a circle here in that is like matches the size of his face. All the edits we do now will only affect his face, as you see here. But what I would like to do is maybe bring up the shadows so we get more detail in his face. And he stands out a little more, like it shouldn't be too crazy, but just a nudge. Maybe like this. And maybe we should give him some extra clarity. This looks nice. And as you see here, when we zoom in on his face, it's not 100% sharp. So like the last resort we can do to fix that is use the sharpening tool here. So if we go all the way here, you can see how it affects the photograph. It's way too much. But if we give him like a little bit of sharpening, maybe something like this. I like this actually. And here you can see the before and after. This is without it. With and without it. I'm happy with it so far, but I think the people are a little too contrasty. So if we raise the shadows for the other people a tiny bit, maybe something like this, right? 
I think this is it. I'm, I'm happy with it. Next up is this photo you see here, which is really underexposed and has messed up white balance. But before we start the edit, here's a few words from Squarespace. This video is brought to you by Squarespace, and I'm really excited about them supporting my channel because I've already built my fair share of Squarespace sites in the past for me and my photography friends, and I've always recommended them. So if you're a photographer like me, who wants to show your work in a professional way, then go to Squarespace, pick a template for your website from the large collection of portfolio designs and present your photography elegantly. Head to squarespace.com slash Frederick to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. In terms of the crop here, I think it's a little too much space here on the left side. I think the alignment is perfect, so no need to adjust that. Let's go and find our white balance. Again, we take the picker here. It's a little bit difficult to see how the white balance should be with the photo being so underexposed. So let me just fix the exposure like this. And maybe, maybe this looks okay for the white balance. The first thing I wanna do here is to raise the shadows to get more details in the face. Again, we're in Mexico City during the day of the dead. Uh, maybe instead of raising the shadows of all the photo, we should just make a mask for the person's face. Let me do that. Let's create a new layer called Face of Katarina. And we pick the drawing tool and then find the size of the brush that makes sense. And then we just paint around the face here. Maybe all the way to the neck. And again, so everything we edit right now will only affect the face, as you see here. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna raise the shadows to get more details. This is a little too crazy. Maybe something like this. This is a little too much, but when we add contrast, which we will do now, I think it will even it out a little bit. I like how this looks actually. I'm still not 100% sure about this white balance. It looks a little too cold for me actually. So if we make it a little warmer, like this, this is good. So far, I think it looks great. There's this yellow spot here that I don't really like. So maybe if we make a new layer called a healing layer, how the healing layer works is that we find a spot that we would like to replace and then we put the replacement you see here somewhere like this. Boom, it's magic. I think this looks great, but I would like to adjust the white balance a tiny bit because it looks a little too green for me. So if we fix the tint here and push it towards a more like pinkish color, like this, maybe some contrast for the whole photograph and some saturation. It's getting there, it's getting there. Um, I would like to have the whites being more white, <laughs> uh, especially in the face. So let's pick the face layer here and then boost the whites. So you see the white in the face of her will be more visible right now. I think this is it for this photograph. Let's go next. All right, next photo is more like a normal street photo of mine. So uh, I'm not sure what happened here with the alignment. So let's start by rotating this image so we have it straight. Maybe something like this looks fine. For this crop, it's a little bit different because I like this photograph, but I wish this guy you see here didn't look at me as well. So it would be only one person looking at the camera. It looks a lot more, it, it looks a lot better when there's only one person and everyone else is busy. So I think I have to crop this guy out. Maybe something like this. Maybe we can take a part of him. And then we realign it again. Like this, I think, is good. I think for this photograph, I would like to have it in black and white. So let's go through some of the... Yeah, for sure, I would like it in black and white. Let's go through some of the presets here. I put a link to the big presets bundle for Capture One as well in the description. I think I like this like heavy contrast to photograph. We can always adjust the contrast afterwards. Maybe we should even have more of his face in it. What if we eliminate him completely? I 
I think we have to go without that dude. And maybe cut some of this off, something like this maybe. Yeah, yeah, I like this one. This is nice. And again, I think we're almost done. We can uh, maybe do some adjustments locally to the boy's face. So let's make a new layer for the boy here and we call it like face of boy. All right, and then I think we just, I think we just draw the circle by hand. Something like this, and then if it's not 100% precise, then we can erase mask as well to refine it. So let's just erase all of this. It's much easier to erase the mask than like make it perfectly the first time. All right. And again with this one, I would like to sharpen his face a little, maybe something like this. Yeah, this is nice. And then we increase the shadows to give him more detail. Maybe some clarity. And maybe increase the exposure a tiny bit. I think it's a little bit too much. Maybe something like this, I like this one. And actually I shot this photograph in another video that I will link to you guys up here, where I go to the Mexico City subway and take photos of the people I see there. But yeah, this is how I edit my photograph, nothing crazy. You guys have wanted this video for a while and I was like, I can make it, but I don't do anything really that advanced. And if there's a video that you would like to request in the future, just let me know. And I put a link to Capture One in the description for a free trial in case you're interested. Until next week.